Ever since the early church, Christians have thought they were in the end times. What makes today any different? Find out today on A View from the Wall. Join I Am A Watchman Ministries Managing Editor Joe Kerr with co-host Dylan Burroughs, bringing you a fascinating discussion regarding the importance of Bible prophecy and Christian living today as it relates to our responsibility as believers to be watchmen. This is A View From The Wall. Welcome to A View From The Wall. I'm Dylan Burroughs here with my co-host Joe Kerr, and we have an exciting program here for you today. I'm excited to talk with you about the new book, Interview with the Antichrist, by our friend and author Jeff Kinley. Thanks for being with us today on A View From The Wall. Gentlemen, it's always great to be with you. Thank you. Well, as we begin our talk with you today, I love the title, Interview with the Antichrist, because it's so provocative, but it also brings to mind this idea that we are really close to the end times. You hear about it in what's going on in the Middle East or in Israel or even here at home in America, and it does bring to light this idea that we talked about in the intro, that ever since the early church, Christians have thought they were in the end times. What makes today any different? Address that, if you would, as we get started. Well, I think one of the biggest things that is happening right now is what's going on in the Middle East with it being such a volatile powder keg. I mean, if if you're paying attention to world news, you don't have to be a Christian or a student of Bible prophecy. I mean, you have to just pay attention and say, look, something's going on and something major could happen at any time that would bring about World War III. I'm getting phone calls from millennials asking me, Jeff, is World War III about to start? So, I mean, it's really on everyone's radar right now. Uh, what's happening there, of course, with many other things that's going on with globalism and, and with just a concern for the earth as a whole, whether it's through the climate change crowd or through the Bible prophecy crowd, people are thinking about planet Earth and about our destiny. So it's really kind of on everyone's minds right now. You talk about that leadership and the, all the powder keg in the Middle East. We talked to Secretary Mike Pompeo about the United States policies changing toward Israel and As we look at history, and your book specifically, this one major world leader that the Bible prophesies about, the Antichrist, there have been leaders throughout history that have controlled at least the known world to them, and um, the Antichrist will control uh, the entire world. What makes that possible that wasn't possible for some of those other world leaders, whether good or evil? Well, I think part of it, gentlemen, is really the historical context of the moment at that time. You know, in a post-rapture world, There's going to be mass chaos and calamity, uh, in addition to the threat of global war, as countries begin to implode militarily, as there's economic collapse, there'll be emotional panic uh, that'll go on, just a really a collective world panic. And I think in that scenario, in that sort of void that's created, there's going to be a, a receptiveness for leadership. And we've seen this throughout history in other times. But this Antichrist, the Bible tells us in Second Thessalonians uh, chapter three, 2, is going to come with a platform of peace and safety. And that fits so perfectly with the scenario of a post-rapture world. You know, I'm reminded of what the first president of the United Nations General Assembly, a guy by the name of Dr. Uh, Paul Henry Spake, said back in 1957, he says, don't give us another committee. Give us a man of sufficient stature to hold the allegiance of all the people. Then he said, send us such a man, whether he be God or devil, and we will receive him. And I think that really indicates kind of the spirit of the age that we're in. We're so desperate right now, but even more so, Satan understands the times, what life's going to be like in a post-rapture world, and he's going to have his chosen one prepared and ready for that moment. Well, that's a good way to put it, because people talk about the Antichrist in the Bible, and it's always this negative, sinister, evil character that people have in mind. But you talk about the Antichrist as being someone who's both diplomatic and diabolical, who's charismatic and charming, and yet corrupt to the core. How can this person be so evil, yet at the same time be embraced by the whole world? Talk about that contrast. Well, I think part of it just has to do with the nature of his character. Uh, You know, the Bible says that that the Antichrist is going to be inhabited by Satan. He's going to be energized and empowered by Satan. And, of course, you know, the old saying, you can win more uh, with people with uh, honey than you can with vinegar. I think Satan understands that. He disguises himself as an angel of light. Uh, He is the great deceiver. And even in our times, you have politicians that will rise to the surface out of relative obscurity 
and yet deliver a message, for example, like a Barack Obama, elected on the simple slogan of hope and change. And when you, when you capitalize on people's fears, and particularly with the fears that are going to be associated with a post-rapture world and that desperation, uh, it's like when someone is hungry, they'll eat just about anything. Well, this man's going to promise them uh, through the, his charisma, through his, his persuasiveness, uh, this pledge to bring about change, and he's going to be the quintessential opportunist. He's going to seize the moment, and he's going to capitalize on it on this worldwide crisis for his own good. I like that you describe that and have that discussion because you also say in the book that you describe the Antichrist transformation into one of the most evil humans in history. Do you think the Antichrist knows he's the Antichrist or, or is there some way that he becomes the Antichrist? Talk about that for a second. Yeah. Well, I, th- I think sufficiently the depravity of man is enough uh, enough evil in us to really warrant uh, the Antichrist rising to power. And you can envision just about any man who has great ambition uh, to rise to this level during a time of crisis. At the same time, uh, this person is going to be a unique individual in history. So the first three and a half years of the tribulation period, you could almost make the argument that he doesn't necessarily have to be energized by Satan. But the Bible does say that something happens in Revelation chapter 12 that is a turning point, almost a triggering mechanism that turns this man into this uh, diabolical deceiver and this demagogue, uh, someone who actually claims to be God. And I think it's at that moment that he, that Satan actually enters into him and that he proclaims himself to be the Almighty. And I think that's what the devil does. I think that's how the devil works in the world, is that he baits us, he gets us hooked in, and then at some point where there's no turning back, he unveils himself for his true character. And I think it's what the Antichrist is going to do. So whether or not he actually knows in the beginning if he's the Antichrist, I think toward the end, he's going to develop this innate uh, connection uh, with this satanic influence that's within him. And whether or not he'll call himself Satan incarnate or not is up for debate, but for sure he's going to act and exhibit all the characteristics and character qualities of a person who would be possessed by Satan. Well, we want to get to this a little bit before we head to our first break, but your book, The Interview with the Antichrist, is one of many books on the Antichrist, but it has a creative twist. Tell us a little bit about what is unique in your new book that people may have not picked up elsewhere. Well, it's a very unique and and really innovative approach in that it's a full-on fiction novel about the Antichrist and sort of this inner, inner circle and what goes on behind the scenes and really behind the eyes of the Antichrist himself and explores his rise and his reign in the context of what he does. I I will say this, gentlemen, that this book is no Christian cheesy novel here. It's not a left behind series. It's not your father's novel uh, for Christians in the end times. It's very dark. It's compelling. It's suspenseful. Suspenseful. It really gets inside your head a little bit. But I think one of the things that I think is most unique about it is that it helps to reach a new generation of Christians who are uninformed presently about the last days, about prophecy, about the Antichrist. And it really becomes a great tool that people can use to introduce this whole idea of the end times and prophecy to others. And of course, at the end of the book, I have 30 compelling questions about the Antichrist answered directly from Scripture. So I think it's going to be a great opportunity for people to use this in a multitude of ways. Well, we've been talking with Jeff Kinley, author of the new book, Interview with the Antichrist. We'll be back with more in a moment. Stay with us. From I Am a Watchman Ministries, here's today's I Am a Watchman Minute. Let me share three ideas to help you regroup and move forward for God in the future. Number one, establish a few reasonable goals. Pray first and be sure your goals are in line with God's. Number two, focus. Goals are seldom accomplished if they are written down and then tucked away. We need to pursue goals with proper energy, resources, and focus. And number three, make a plan. Consider this. If you want to learn how to play an instrument, you would not meet that goal by just thinking about it or reading a book about it. So make a plan to commit proper time and resources to pursue good goals. Watchmen know the hour is late. So set good goals, focus, make a plan, for there is much to do and many to be saved. Be bold. Be faithful. Be a watchman. 
IamAWatchman.com. Welcome back to A View from the Wall. This is Dylan and Joe. We are here today with Jeff Kinley, author of Interview with the Antichrist. And I love how this book takes a story and uses it to communicate truth about Bible prophecy. For example, you tell the story through the eyes of a 28-year-old journalist. He's an interesting character from my perspective, but if the Antichrist appeared today, would young people, those in our millennial generation, for example, would they follow this type of Antichrist leader? Well, I think absolutely. Uh, In fact, the Bible tells us that all generations are going to accept him and follow him. But if you think about where this millennial generation is today, and I certainly don't mean to to, uh, broad brush stroke the entire generation this way. I've got you know, children that are in this generation. They're certainly not like this. Sure. But many in this generation, well, their foretaste, their focus in life right now is social justice, social media, uh, climate change, tolerance, and then on the tail end, trying to eliminate the crushing student loan debt that they've acquired uh, right. from their time in college. You know, So they're preoccupied. They're not really that much in touch with things. So anyone that would come along, if the rapture were to happen today, and this figure were to arise from uh, the nations, as it were, I think his promises would ruin and persuade them. Uh, with that message, again, of peace and safety, he's going to bring the world to a, a new place, to a new era, uh, that type of thing. And so, yes, I do think it would be an easy sell for him, uh, not only because of his abilities, but also because of the context of, of where this leaves people. They're in the millennial generation right now. Uh, in a post-rapture world, they're going to be desperate for answers and for hope and help, and he's going to give it to them. I love the description you gave of the book. I did get a chance to read the entire thing. Absolutely loved it all the way beginning to end. But even though the story is fiction, it tells a lot of the real Bible events and Bible prophecy and accurately portrays some of those end time events. What are some of the real events and prophecy that readers will find in the book? Well, it's a great question. And, you know, as I began to to write the book, Joe, I began to think about, you know, what do I want to include in this story and what I want to highlight from uh, Bible prophecy, from Daniel, from Revelation, that type of thing. Of course, the rapture really sets the the um, kind of a tone for the whole book, really from a background perspective. And it doesn't come out and say, hey, the rapture happened. But there is that in the storyline that really does inform the events and the decisions that are going on in the Antichrist inner circle. Of course, you have his covenant uh, that he makes with Israel. I talk about, uh, speculate on how that might come about, how that could come about. You've got the war of Gog and Magog, the Jewish temple being rebuilt, uh, the abomination of desolation uh, leading up to Armageddon, and some other really, I think, spine-tingling moments that are based on real prophetic events. So I peppered those in as they were relating to the story, and I show how the Antichrist and his inner circle really respond to those things that are going on uh, in Scripture. I think for a lot of people, when they start talking about the Antichrist, one, they're worried, is the Antichrist already in our world today? And then two, what are some of the criteria we would have to look for if we are trying to identify who the Antichrist is? Talk a little bit about that and how that's revealed in your book. Yeah. Well, I think one of the things that that you see emerging in the book is really the, the character development of this Antichrist figure. I mean, you, you initially are introduced to this young uh, journalist. His name is Julian de Klerk. He's from Belgium. And uh, he gets an opportunity uh, to get on the inside to actually write the, the biography, the memoirs, uh, for this new leader that has emerged. And so what the book does is basically trace through some of his development of how he himself uh, views his own journey. And that's part of the interview process. I mean, you know, the book is called Interview with the Antichrist. It's really the story of the Antichrist told from uh, the inside. And so it does explore those character developments, those decisions that he makes, how he comes to those decisions, how he explains those decisions to those, not only in his inner circle, but also to the entire world. So you really do kind of get a micro and a macro view uh, of this person of the Antichrist. And, And through seeing that, by the end of the book, you really understand who this person is. Well, I want to follow up on that just briefly. For many people, they're not even clear who this Antichrist is going to be, where this person is going to come from. How do we know it's a man versus a a woman, for example? Do we know what country the Antichrist is coming from? Is this person a Muslim or a Jew or a Christian or someone with no faith at all? What does the Bible tell us about the identity of the Antichrist? Well, and I cover a lot of these things in those 30 questions at the end of the book. And 
part of what the Bible tells us about the Antichrist is that he really emerges out of the sea of humanity, if you will. And uh, I talk about whether the debate between is he a Gentile, is he a Jew, or is he a Muslim, and I give reasons uh, why uh, people say that for each of those. Uh, but also just talk about his his origins. You know, they're very, very obscure, and they're very dark. We don't know really exactly where he comes from, although the Bible does tell us that he'll come from the prince of the people who, who destroyed Jerusalem. And we, we know that, that the Romans were the ones who actually destroyed uh, Jerusalem in 70 AD. So he's going to have some sort of either immediate or distant Roman connection. Uh, so in the book, uh, he's Italian in my book. And so uh, I kind of trace that through a little bit to, to show you a little bit of how, how I came to that. But yeah, he's going to develop this this uh, this character that people are going to see in the book that's going to be very diabolical and sinister at the same time. Uh, he's going to be very charismatic. He's going to be very cunning. Uh, he's going to be very warm. He's someone that you would like uh, on the one hand, but just don't get on his bad side. Jeff, every author has a favorite part of the story that they like to tell. What's the favorite part of an interview with the Antichrist, the part you don't want anyone to miss? <laughs> That's a great question. And uh, there are really a couple. You know, when I sat down to write this book, I, I said, you know, my heart as I prayed through, you know, how to really present this thing. I thought, you know, I want this to be the kind of book that someone can go to Barnes & Noble or whatever and pick up on the shelf whether they're a Christian or not a Christian, pick up this book and really be moved and challenged and educated and, and really emotionally stimulated. And so there's a couple of uh, specific scenes in the book uh, that I really were uniquely gripped by when I wrote them. Uh, one of them takes place in Jerusalem, and the other takes place, oddly enough, in a library. And those are the two scenes that uh, when I, I sort of... Uh, did my, my manuscript kind of ran it past the millennial focus group because I really wanted it to connect with their generation. And uh, one of the persons that uh, that read the early manuscript said, you know, during both those scenes that they had the hair on the back of their neck stand up. They thought, man, I felt like I was standing in that library. I saw the scene. I felt what was going on, the energy that was there. So there's several scenes like that, Jerusalem and the library, a couple others I won't mention. But uh, just, just know that there are twists, surprises, unexpected turns. And uh, someone said, yeah, it reads like a movie. Well, that's wonderful. Well, I appreciate the content that you have in there from a biblical perspective, but you also include the gospel. And when we return, we want to talk about how we can share the gospel through this story, this new book by Jeff Kenley, Interview with the Antichrist. Stick with us. We'll be right back with more here on A View from the Wall. The rapture can happen at any time. You may be ready, but are your friends and family spiritually prepared for the coming of the Lord? What will happen to those left behind? We've created a new resource to help you help them. It's called the Rapture Kit. Included in the Rapture Kit is a Bible and vital information on what the rapture is and how to prepare for what's to come. The Rapture Kit also includes eight books on prophecy, apologetics, the Christian walk, and being a watchman for the Lord, plus a number of video and audio teachings, all preloaded on an eight gigabyte flash drive. Become more strategic and active in your witnessing. Warn the lost about the coming rapture and help individuals in the post-rapture world be drawn to Christ, equipping them to become the next generation of ministry leaders. Learn more and order at rapturekit.org. We're back at A View from the Wall. This is Dylan along with Joe, and we have been talking today with Jeff Kinley the author of Interview with the Antichrist. And as we ended our last segment, we were talking a little bit about how you can interweave the gospel through fiction. Tell us a little bit about how that was done in your book, Interview with the Antichrist. Well, one of the things that that a good historical fiction, or in this case, a future historical fiction can do, is that it really informs and orientates people to a subject that they might not previously be acquainted with. And so I think as, as the story is told, What's happening in the background is you're, you're beginning to be awakened, you're beginning to be alerted, you're beginning to watch, you're beginning to think about your world, even as you're looking at this uh, future world. And so there is a sense of, and my wife put it this way, she said, you know, your story, your novel is like breadcrumbs leading to the truth. 
And so many people are going to read this book and they're going to be picking up those breadcrumbs. And at the end of the book, they're going to get the, the whole loaf of bread, you know, in this uh, 30 compelling questions straight from scripture. But the fiction section, man, really what it does is it orientates people to think about, man, I don't want to live in this world. I don't want to be there when the Antichrist is in, is in charge and his regime is in control and all these cataclysmic judgments are coming down from God as Revelation talks about. How do I escape this? And so one of the things that I do at the end of the book is give people an opportunity to actually trust Jesus Christ. And that's really the goal of the book, not just to, uh, to entertain or to inform or to, to give people kind of a, a stimulating read, but also to help them uh, understand the truth and to bring them to a place where they can know Jesus Christ. And, and again, I get so many people that come up to me at Bible conferences and stuff, they say, man, I wish my kids would get into prophecy, I wish they would know what's going on, and discern the times, this is the book for them. This is the book you'll take and give it to a friend, buy it for a relative, and so it really does do that whole thing, orientate, inform, but also lead to the truth of Christ. It's extremely well written. I've read a number of speculative fiction novels like this, starting way back in the day with um, Frank Peretti's books, but it is really well done. And we know this is a fictional story, but it raises an interesting question. We believe the rapture could happen any day. It could happen right now. And in the dialogue, the Antichrist character says he was born in 1988. That would make him 32 years old right now. If the Antichrist is a world leader within as you put it in the book, a year after the rapture, he would have to be an adult today, right? Well, he would if the rapture happened today. In fact, well, the book itself takes place uh, during kind of the 2030 uh, decade. But if the rapture were to take place today, then yes, he would have to be an adult. Uh, you know, m most people think about this, guys, is that you know Satan has no clue when the rapture is going to take place. Uh, yeah, God right. hasn't given Satan any idea about, or, or us, any idea about when that's going to happen. So he must, of necessity, be grooming at least one or more potential candidates in every generation. And I think we can safely say that if the rapture happens between now and the next 30 years, the Antichrist is alive today, because you would presume he would be around 30 or at least 30 years old before he would assume a world leadership role. So, so yes, I believe he. if the rapture happens now, he's definitely alive, but if it happens even 30 years, he's alive today. Right. Well, it's interesting in our culture now you have, for example, the most recent Avengers film, which starts talking about the vanishing, where all of these people have disappeared from humanity and everyone is left behind trying to deal with it the best they can. Now, of course, in the film, they go time travel to solve their problem. We don't have that option, but we do have the Bible that tells us what we can do to prepare for what is going to take place, both talking about the rapture as well as the tribulation and judgments that are to come. For those who are reading this book and they're concerned about the rapture, what are some practical applications that you can give people who are listening and saying, well, what am I supposed to do if the rapture comes tomorrow? How can I live now that would get me ready for that? How can I live today that would make the greatest impact? Yeah. And, you know, the Bible really is the greatest uh, time travel document, and we really can know the future from reading the Scripture. That's one of the things right. that God has always done for His people, is give us a heads up on history. That's, and I think He does that because He does love us, but He also does want us to prepare. I think two things. One is, is for Christians just to realize, you know, this is not a time just to pursue the American dream or just to live however we want. I mean, it's a time to prepare. It's a time to be a watchman on the wall. It's a time to look out over the horizon as a believer and say, what's coming? What's happening now that tells me that something else is coming in the future? And I think what that does, it helps us to be uh, someone who would tell others about Jesus Christ, who, who would be like in the days of Noah to warn them of the coming flood. And I think God would have us do that as well. And of course, there are many ways that we can do that. But I think we should personally prepare ourselves for the return of Christ. Uh, we should tell others. And then if someone's listening who's not a believer, who reads this, who's not a believer, I think certainly in, if they consider this book to be remotely possible uh, in the future, it would motivate them to want to say, what about me? And in fact, I definitely let, lead the reader to do that at the end of the book, because I want them to, to engage with the truth, not just to have a, a great story, but really, what does the story lead to? And so that's one of the goals of this book. So preparing uh, for the return of Christ, not to be uninformed, as many believers are today, and then also uh, to use this book to reach the next generation. Jeff, the book is amazing. We want our listeners to get a copy, and they're going to learn a lot, but they're also going to love the way you present the storyline. The book is available on the I Am a Watchman website bookstore. Where else can people find it? 
Yeah, really, wherever books are sold. Uh, Walmart, Target, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, ChristianBook.com. There's also an Audible version uh, that's coming out as well, so uh, digitally and print, anywhere books are sold. And if you're not familiar with Jeff Kinley, he is not an author of just this one book, but he's written over 30 books related to Bible prophecy and Christian living. I think of some of my favorites, as it was in the days of Noah, or one called The End of America you did some time ago, another one called The Coming Apostasy. You've done several books that have been a blessing to the body of Christ. And as we wrap up our time together today, I know this book is fiction, but the events are real and they are coming quickly. What can our Watchmen audience take from Interview with the Antichrist that will encourage and challenge them in their calling to watch, warn, witness, and finish well? Well, I think what all Bible prophecy really does for us, it does encourage us. It does bless us. As Revelation says, just to read the book itself is a blessing. Uh, But it must prepare us, too, as I said. I think Bible prophecy is the most comforting thing uh, that we can put our hope in right now concerning the future events. Because I don't believe that we, as the bride of Christ, are going to be around uh, during this uh, this time of Jacob's trouble, this time of, of tribulation. So I think the first thing we need to do is to help Christians be informed. And once they're informed, you know what happens? All the fear goes away, and here comes the faith, here comes the comfort, and here comes the motivation for them to be able to reach out to others and say, hey, listen, this is not a doomsday scenario. This is not something to scare you, but it's really something to help you understand what God says is going to happen, uh, maybe differently than I put in the book, but it is going to happen in our world. So I think it's a great encouragement for believers as well. And then the last thing would just be, as I said earlier, many times Christians are looking for tools. How can I help someone without just preaching the gospel to them face-to-face? And sometimes just giving them a book or you know helping them connect with some truth in this way, I think is a great way to kind of lead up, to ramp up to them hearing the gospel itself. So evangelistic tool and equipping tool all put in one. Great. Well, you've been listening to Jeff Kinley talking about Interview with the Antichrist. You can find out more at jeffkinley.com about his ministry, his previous books, and all that he has going on, some of his speaking engagements, and how you can contact him for more information. Again, this new book, Interview with the Antichrist, you can find at our bookstore, iamawatchman.com. Again, that's iamawatchman.com. We'd love to encourage you to visit our website, find out more about all of our podcasts and radio programs, as well as our articles, devotionals, and other ways you can connect and be equipped for what is happening in these last days. We appreciate you being with us. encourage you to join us next time here on A View from the Wall. A View from the Wall, in association with I Am a Watchman Ministries, exists to equip a worldwide audience with biblical truth, sharing it with others, and being prepared for Christ's imminent return. The team seeks to encourage, inspire, and equip watchmen for such a time as this. For information about the ministry and upcoming events, visit IamAWatchman.com. A View from the Wall is made possible by the team of dedicated pastors, editors, and the many contributors of I Am A Watchman Ministries. To support our efforts, give online at IamAWatchman.com and click on the Donate button. Thanks for listening, and join us again next time on A View from the Wall.